Hi guys, so today I wanted to show you how it is that I clean and spin dog wool, dog hair, to turn into yarn. So this is my most recent skein, and this was made from an Australian Shepherd Husky mix, and she has about four pounds of this. And I spun it to be quite puffy, as I experimented with it, every wool, every hair is going to be different, so you do have to play with it. The first thing I need to show you is how to prep the wool. You can just use dog combs, but you need two of them. And these are just really inexpensive dollar store dog brushes. And this is the wool. I like to do my cleaning and spinning outside in um, nice weather that might have a tiny bit of a breeze and the reason for that is that it blows all the all the random puffy hairs that have escaped off of you so it's just not quite such dirty work so i'm going to go ahead and show you first i want to show you how she stored this she took a pencil puncher and punched holes in the top of the bag so that it could breathe and then she closed it and that's really important that's a great way to store yarn all the time any kind of any kind of uh, animal fiber it's good to let it breathe you can't work a lot of it at any given time you want to load the brushes up until they're full and then um, just keep seeing how much more you can fit it's not like wool where you can overload the brush, you'll just see that it's loaded and that the teeth are full. The teeth are full on that side. I could probably fill them up a little bit more on this side, we'll see. And it does seem to make a pretty big difference doing this as opposed to just trying to spin it as is, straight from the bag. It seems to grab a lot of clumps and you waste a lot of fiber, you lose a lot of fiber, and you don't get as regular a yarn in the end if you don't work it this way. So there we go. That is just how simple it is. Now this is going to be a labor of love. It's gonna be something that might not feel as straightforward as other kinds of spinning. Now this, this is my core. It is just this skein of thread. And the reason that I need to use it is that the, the fiber from this dog is quite short. And I don't want to, um, I don't want to try and make it so tight that I can't keep it soft and I might not even be able to spin it without the core again because it's so short. So this is my this is my Spinolution uh, Queen Bee. This is the a wheel that's meant to spin super fine yarn and I'm just going to let it spin on like that. I'm going to put it on here and I should put just a little bit more on. It is a little bit awkward to work with this because it is very puffy and it wants to go every direction. So I'm going to put that back on. I want to get some of the fiber and the twist in before I try to put it onto the bobbin just so that I'm not spinning on an empty piece of yarn. That probably doesn't make any sense to you, but I wanted to already have some yarn on it before I put it onto the bobbin. So that's why I attach it the way I do. All right, so now we're ready to go and it will be easier for me to be consistent. All right. And I dropped my other, so I'm just gonna take this one off the comb. Now I did already do this video over on Facebook, but I thought 
it would be nice to do a more in-depth video on how to do this rather than doing it as a live show. Now it does better as a long draw when you can let it just naturally wrap. And like any other yarn, it takes a minute to figure out how much of a pull you want. And that's too much of a pull. I need to take that out. I was plying the dog yarn last and so I had a pretty good pull on it because I was doing a Navajo ply which requires some pretty good pulls so I need to let it set a little bit more of a twist and you see I'm not guiding I'm not guiding it I'm actually doing a long draw meaning I'm letting the twist carry up without actually um, forcing it to do anything maybe I have that wrong is that a long draw I don't know where where it's also a core spun maybe it's not a legitimate long draw but for me a long draw means that you're allowing the wool to the twist to pull up into the wool instead of preventing the twist to pull up from pulling up into the wool and so I'm just using my my one hand to pinch and do just a little bit of opening and closing to let the fiber on but not a lot of restriction I'm, I'm, I'm depending on my fiber prep to have been thorough enough to make it somewhat consistent. I just am using one hand to let it move. And because it's a very fine, short fiber, it goes onto that thread pretty well, pretty consistently. That one's a bit thin, so I want to bring this back up and see if I can get some more to go on. What you want is not necessarily perfection, you just want consistency. With most patterns, consistency is enough. And you can change your gauge as far as how tight you spin or how loose you spin and all those other things as long as it's consistent through the project. It's when it goes up and down and bulky and fine, all in the same uh, yarn, but not in a consistent way, that it causes problems with most patterns. And this, I just sat down at it, and this is the first one where I'm trying really hard to be at least a little bit consistent. With the other one, it was just a big experiment. What did the yarn, what did the fiber want to be? Now I'm trying to tell the fiber just a little bit what I want it to be, and we'll see if I can be successful. And I will admit that it is more difficult to do this when I'm filming and having to keep track of the camera. So that is also going to lead to some inconsistencies. What I feel at this point is that it, it's always easier to um, keep in mind what yarn you want by thinking about what your final project is going to be and what characteristics you're going to be happy with. And at this point, what is easy to spin is going to be something you would use like as a, as a bulky hat project because of just some of the limitations of the fiber. So there's that. All right, and there is how to spin dog fiber. If you have any questions, you can go over to Dirt Patch Heaven on Etsy. I'll put the link in the description and you can ask me any questions. This spins very similarly to Angora Rabbit or Alpaca. Uh, it has very much the same consistency and I enjoy doing it. I like the challenge. It's gonna be a huge challenge to keep it super consistent because I can't, the, these dog brushes, do a better job than anything else I tried. I tried to use the combs, I tried to use my regular big wool combs that you can create roving on and it just didn't work as well as the super, super cheap uh, actual dog dog brushes. So this would, if you have a lot of this, a lot of fiber, make sure that it's clean. It's The lady who sent this to me, she said she keeps her dog very clean. She brushes him daily. So you don't wanna be taking dirty, smelly fiber and trying to spin it because your final product will be dirty and smelly. I'm a little bit allergic to dogs and I have had no problem working with this wool because of how clean she has it. There's no dander, there's no dirt, there's no smell of dogs. So this is actually gonna be a lovely heirloom type 
um, garment when she has it finished and I'm excited to see what she does with it. So if you have any questions, make sure to ask me and we'll talk to you later.